So we're back in paradise and Colton is still on his Viola Davis and I am over it. Guys, I'm over T and Colton. I'm done. We are done with them. Can we please move on to another couple? I just, I really do hope that this, like Tia and Colton does not take over all of Paradise, but I know that Tia will be a huge part of Paradise because she's the lead of this season, but I, I need, I, I need something else. It's too much. It's too much. Anyway, let's get into it. So Becca finally finds Colton. Because remember last episode where she was like, they were filming her feet going up like millions of steps and she was like going into different rooms. Hello, hello. I'm like, did they not tell you where Colton was staying? So anyway, after Colton has finished uh, trying to force tears out of his eyes on standing on some rocks looking over the beach, Becca finally finds him in his room. He's like, ugh, hey. <laughs> Dude, you too cute to be this thirsty for camera time. I feel like he was cute enough on his own. He also has like the virgin thing. So I just felt like he didn't need to be so thirsty. I felt like it, the work was already going to do it for him. Like the fact that he's like huge. We'll talk about that when Jubilee comes and hugs him. I'm like, he's that big? Boy, you don't need to do all of this <laughs> at all. So anyway, Colton and Becca are talking and he's just like, I just, I just, I just didn't get any closure, you know, and I just, I, the way we left and she was, <laughs> and I'm here for petty Becca because she was just like, um, you needed closure for Tia? <laughs> Becca, you knew that he was talking about you, but I love the fact that she threw that pettiness right at him because I felt like she recognized in that moment or she wanted to let us know, the viewers know, that she knew he was scamming. Because it was very obvious that he was talking about closure with her. But when she said, oh, closure for Tia? I'm like, yes, sis. I'm not here for the man you picked, but I'm here for the pettiness work. And then the scam king does all of this crying for two whole episodes. And then two seconds into talking with Becca, he's like, I got the closure I needed really you did all that crying had a whole breakdown rolling around in the sand and then you're just like I, I got the closure I needed I'm good I'm good even threatening oh I think I need to leave I can't stay here like this I, I gotta go I'm not well I'm not right talking to Becca and you got the closure you needed boy bye boy bye what was funny to me was that when he went to the guys and told them that he was staying because Colton walked on the beach like a new person he was like hey how you doing guys because I'm Colton's Colton <laughs> So he walks on the beach and the, um, he meets the guys and they're like, because they're all thinking after the Oscar winning performance that he gave, they're all thinking that he's leaving. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to stay. I'm ready. I got the closure I needed. And all the guys are like, what? You were just crying on a beach. Now you're OK. Now you can stay here and find love in paradise. I felt like the guys who didn't know that he was scamming in that moment realized what it was because they were all like, what the hell? Colton is staying? Um, you too fine. You too fine to be this thirsty. Too fine. Has people never told you in your life that you're fine? I don't know what's going on, Colton. I don't understand. You, you pretty people don't operate like this. I know. <laughs> Work. Oh, Annalise. Annalise. Why can't Jordan say her name? I feel like he's putting it on. But anyway, sis, I got to get you together because... Annalise, y'all have not been here that long for you to be talking about Jordan as a husband. Like she was talking, I forget who she was talking about. I think it was Bibiana. Cause I feel like Bibiana's air is always ready. Like she's not finding love, but she's always available to listen to people who are trying to find love in paradise. The, Bibiana and Jordan are pure producer picks. The fact that she's still here and she's not trying to like find any connection with anybody lets me know that which is why I believe that she gave Colton her rose because I think the producers let her know that you're probably going to go next time so if you want to stay a little longer give Colton your rose so we can keep that drama going I'm not bothered by that when they do that kind of stuff um I'm only bothered when it's sloppy because this is a reality tv show I know the ins and outs of reality tv shows just from working out here in LA like we can, like, you could be walking down, like, Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills and you can see the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills filming their show. You can see people yelling cut. You can see them telling to redo something. So, don't do it. I'm filming. So, we're already very aware. 
So we're already very aware that a lot of these reality, majority of them, except for intervention, are not um, real. A lot of them are partially scripted. So that doesn't bother me when the producers are keeping people along or trying to force a storyline. It's a TV show, it's what they should do. But that's my reasoning for Bibiana only being there because she's not putting in any work, like no effort at all. Anyway, she's talk I think Annalise is talking to her about Jordan being husband material. And I'm like, girl, what? Annalise, what's up with you? Because how? How? Y'all have been there for like a few days. You are talking about this dude being a husband and how you're falling for him. And I'm like, <laughs> even if you like Jordan, you don't look at him as husband material. Jordan is hookup material at this point. Like, why are you even looking at a dude that's still teething to be a husband? Like, it's not going to work, sis. And this is what happens. When you do clownery, it comes back to bite. Older people, if you are an older person in a relationship with somebody younger, you just got to chill. You got to chill. Let that younger person get to the level where you're at to settle down and do all of that stuff. But you older ladies and older dudes be getting with these young people, these younger partners, and it's just like, oh, now I'm, I'm ready for marriage. Not that 22-year-old. That 22-year-old is not ready for marriage. Jordan is not ready for marriage. He wants to have a good time and have some fun. And you're talking about him being a husband. And I'm like, sis, you can't see this. You can't see this. You too old. And I'm not saying that 33 is old. <laughs> still young. Still young and primitive. I call myself old at a good, I'm be like, you know what? I'm old. A good 55. That's what I'm like. I'm done. <laughs> That's what I'm just like. Okay, no more. I gotta, I gotta settle down. I'm about, you know, I'm about to be in the grandma stages. I gotta chill, right? But up until then, I'm gonna be zipping it and doing it. <laughs> But um, not saying that Annalise being 33 is old. She's older than Jordan. So she's went through her phase of just like, you know, knock them out 20s. Because them 20s, whoo, unless, like my 20s are a little different. Because I was, I was pursuing acting like really hard. So I was in school, I was traveling and it was, <laughs> I have like fun, I have fun moments, but my, my 20s was a hustle, but it's setting me up now for like, you know, the 30s when I'm like getting, doors are opening for me. So I'm glad I did that hustle. But sometimes I'm like, man, I, wanna, I wish I would have had a bit more fun, but it's good now because I'm having a good time now. <laughs> the sacrifice was worth it. But I'm just saying, Annalise being 33, you need to at this point recognize when, a dude is just not there and Jordan is clear, clearly not there. So I'm just disappointed in her for not seeing it and for falling for him this soon. Like even on that date, like she just can't pick up cues. You know what? They might make her the next bachelorette because she is so dense and out there and they want, they like bachelorettes who don't know what the hell they're doing. They just like bachelorettes who are picking crazy. And I think they do it because it's good TV because the viewers go nuts and it makes us all have a reaction. That's why they pick them kind of bachelorettes that just don't see anything. It's just like, oh my goodness, I had no idea that he was like this until after the show. But you know what? We're moving past it. That's the bachelorettes they want to get. I want, I want them to get a bachelorette who her opening line is game, recognize game. You know what I mean? I want her to get on the show and just be like, you are not here for me. You're here for the cameras. This is not your time to audition. I want a husband. Next, chop. I'm not even giving you dudes roses. Y'all don't deserve it. What's next? Who want to impregnate me? Not that rough. I got a little rough in my description. Not that rough, but I just want a bachelorette that is not playing games and is able to see, like, all women are not so naive. There are women, oh, maybe that's it. And I've just started watching The Bachelorette like that again, so this could not be true, but I just feel like they keep on picking bachelorettes who come from a certain kind of privilege, you know, where they're, like, protected from certain things. Can they get like a bachelorette from the Bronx? <laughs> Give me a bachelorette from the Bronx. Give me a bachelorette from South Jersey. Give me a bachelorette from North Philadelphia. I want a bachelorette who is quick, who gets it, who sees these dudes playing the games and is not here for it. You know what I mean? I want her to have nice dresses, great eyelashes, beautiful dates all across the world, but I also want her to be like, you are not here for me. You're here for him. You know, like David, you're not here for me. You're here for Jordan. You need to make that work and keep it going. I'm not even going to waste a, a rose ceremony on you. You got the wrong intentions. Have a good day. Something. But these bachelorettes are just like, ooh, ooh. oh my goodness, he's husband material. 
Girl, he can't even balance a checkbook. How is he gonna balance your home? Jen, party girl Jen is back. It's about to get coconut. <laughs> I like her. I do, and I love her for Jordan. I think they are perfect. I think they are in the same uh, space of life right now where it's like not quite husband, not quite wife, but y'all are on one today. <laughs> not quite husband, not quite wife, but still having fun and maybe having somebody that is not necessarily a partner, but working towards that a few years down the line. But just keep on meeting up and having a good time. I think they're in the same space and I think that it's perfect for Jordan. I like them together and I like Jen. She's fun. Jordan is fun. Why not make that work? That seems like a good couple. Of oh my gosh. Every bachelor to bachelor or bachelorette in paradise right now. Please read the room. Jen comes in. Jordan is smitten. They're all on that soiled canopy. Woo. I hate that little couch or whatever they said. Whatever that big thing that they all just lay and sit and make out on. It looks like it stinks to me, right? So they're all sitting on there. Annalise is just sitting in the corner just looking like a deer in headlights poor thing poor thing and the skin is going through some changes is that sunburn i, I don't know i don't know if, it's, if she's necessarily sunburn there's something going on well i'm just like girl you need to get some coverage okay like have you can you tell production to get you some sunscreen something because i feel like that sun that paradise sun is kicking her behind anyway so annalise is sitting on there and Jen and Jordan are connecting and everybody's like, oh my goodness, they're so perfect together. I see that happening. I'm so glad that she came for Jordan. Jordan is smitten. He's so in love. Annalise is sitting there like dying inside. Nobody, <laughs> nobody stopped to think that maybe this wasn't the conversation that we should be having in front of Annalise because everybody on that freaking soiled ottoman <laughs> was down for Jordan and Jen and poor Annalise I just I want her to go home I don't want her to get a rose I just I, I feel like it's she reminds me of that other girl whose uncle passed away was it her uncle her grandfather passed away in paradise and she was already crying before then she came back and she got with that Canadian guy. That was last season. She got with a Canadian guy who was absolutely horrible to her. And I just, I don't want that to happen to Annalise. So I just want her to leave. I just want her to leave, get her head straight, maybe come back for winning games. But I just, mm-mm. She, she's done. She's done. She's emotionally done. So then Jen, because she has the date card, she decides to take out Jordan on the date and, um... <laughs> Poor Annalise. Like, even still, like, Jen and Jordan are frolicking on a beach in her thong bikini, okay? Listen, that's how you show up to paradise. I had no problem with it. If I'm going to be on the beach, my butt is going to be out. Like, why not? You can't do it at a local pool. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're on the beach, have your butt out. That's what it's for. So, anyway, <laughs> butt out, frolicking, riding him, having a good time. Annalise is still talking about Jordan being amazing and being a possible husband. And I'm like, oh, girl, you, you don't read no cues. Like, I, I, you can't be this dense. I don't understand grown people this dense. And maybe it's because I was that dense at 14. Like, God was running game on me at 14. Not in no good, no good, saturated 30s. Oh, hell no. This is when you're just like, nope. I'm not playing those games. If you won't come to me, you won't come correct. You should have caught me at 24 when I was dumb, but not now, baby. I know what's up. But she's still just like, he's so amazing. Yeah, he's gonna be a great husband. I'm like, dude, Jen, not you. Like, she doesn't get it. She doesn't get it. Anyway, Jordan is having a great time. I'm really happy for him. He see, this was real. He seemed very authentic and just being smitten by her and she was reciprocating and I just like them too. I don't think they're going to get married. I don't think it's serious, but where they're at in life, they're on the same page. And sometimes you just find your partner for that moment. And I think they're good for each other for right now. Um, who knows what'll happen later on, but right now, they, they met in the same space and it works for them. So then Jordan does something that it was, it was harsh, but I respect it because he was like, listen, me and Annalise has something going on, but I'm feeling Jen and I want to pursue it. And basically he's going to have to pursue it in front of her. So he came back right from the date and was just like, it's like, listen, what me and you have Annalise cannot catch up to what me and Jen have. Like it's, it's instant. It was an instant, instant connection. 
I want to pursue it. I want to let you know that I'm going to give her the rose and I don't want you to be waiting around thinking that I'm going to change my mind. I want you to go and explore and try to find other guys or whatever. But this is right here. We're going to end this. And he goes on and then he lies and said that it was he had a really good talk with her. I didn't like that. I felt like he was very selfish in that moment where it's just like, although I appreciated him being abrupt and get right to it. I, I felt like it was very one-sided for him. He wanted to get out of it because he wanted to pursue Jen in front of Annalisa's face, but he didn't care how she felt about it because he never let her respond. Annalise was just sitting there, okay, mm -hmm. just looking, never really, you know, wanting to hear how she felt about it. And that just let me know. And it confirmed for me that he wasn't really feeling her. I felt like he was just doing something to stay there or just have camera time, but he wasn't really feeling her. And so he was glad to get out of that situation, but I just didn't like how, how he just did it without really caring. You know, I respected him that he got right to it, but he could have done it with some compassion and he didn't. And that's what I didn't like. David, 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 why is this your storyline? You look like a fool. I hope they are giving you a little bit more in your paycheck to have you be this guy that is chasing after Jordan. You look dumb. He is not interested in Jen. Made no mention of her when she first arrived. All of a sudden, he's into her when Jordan and Jen come back from the date and Jordan is talking about how he's falling for her. Now David is interest, interested in her. He brings her a birthday cake and he's just being really weird with her. I, I'm, I'm looking for, you know, yeah, I know you're looking for something more serious and I know you had a cup, cup, cup. First of all, fix What's going on here with the froggy? Like, what is going on? He's so weird and awkward and just annoying. Everything that a woman does not want, he is. If you're here trying to find love in paradise, why are you so obsessed with Jordan? Like, what is going on? And I'm not trying to say that the dude is closeted. Maybe he's obsessed, like, to the point where it's like, you know, I, what is that movie? There was this movie a long time ago where this guy was stalking. I think it came out in the 80s. This guy was stalking another guy and you thought that the twist was him like being gay, but he wasn't like he wanted this dude so bad that he wanted to morph into him and he like even dreamed about having sex with him. But it wasn't like, first of all, why the hell did I watch this movie? I was a freaking I'm thinking about the scenes from this movie and I'm like, where the hell was my mother? <laughs> Anyway, that's where I think it is. I think that Drew, uh, that David is just really obsessed with Jordan. I'm hoping it's producer prodding because if it's not, dude, you need help. This is unhealthy. This is single white male, okay? Not white female, single, oh, you know what? Single white female. That's what he giving me. He is doing the most to get under this dude's skin, even going as far to play with somebody's emotions to harm him. Sick. Sis, sis, you going home. You're not doing no work. Naisha is just sitting there skinny, swinging in a hammock, not trying to get with any kind of dude. And even though Eric said this and it bothered me, I couldn't deny it because I don't see Naisha, Naisha, whatever. I don't see her doing anything. He says that the rose that she gave him was a friendship rose. So he starts making out with that other, that girl that Colton was with. She's another one. I don't even remember her name, but she's all over the place as well. But again, it's because Colton and T have taken up so much of this show. You just have not been able to see other people's connections if they haven't, if they don't. So that's probably why I don't remember the girl's name or remember much about her, but he sits down with her and they start making out. And the two things about uh, this that bothered me was one, that Eric said that he's going to give his rose to her because Naisha, he doesn't need to return the favor to her because Naisha gave him more of a friendship rose. Although I do agree with that from the footage that we have seen. Did you say that to Naisha? Cause I'm pretty sure she want to stay in paradise, right? So I ain't like that. She kept you here, but you're not going to keep her here. Okay. And I wouldn't have a problem with it if I if I thought that he really felt a connection with this girl, but he just wanted to, you know, get his rocks off. You know what I mean? He just wanted to make out with her. And then he did something that I hate. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it because it is a rep it it represents like a really grimy, sleazy kind of dude. The kind of dude that won't let you walk down the street without like cat calling you and making you feel very uncomfortable. He looks at her and he says, Can I get a hug? And I'm like, you are, 
you the can I get a hug guy, Eric? Really? Because he's actually really, really cute. I was at an event and I saw him. He's very like tall and cut. Like he does not look, he looks so much better in person than he does on camera. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. And so I'm like, you that dude, you the can I get a hug guy? Eric is disappointing me in paradise. I was really hyped for him. I thought that he was going to be one of the guys on The Bachelor. But for some reason, he is just like falling deeply behind. I thought he was going to be killing it in paradise, but he's not. And I don't know like what's going on. He's another one fading to the back like Wills. And thank you to um, whoever sent me that interview of Wills. It was really sad to see him like that still broken up. Um, but I felt like he was more crying over the fact that he wasn't getting as much camera time as Colton. <laughs> um, and not over the fact that he was really looking for somebody, but I just feel like Will's, Will's, um, I just want to say Trader Joe, Will's Grocery Store Joe, ugh, yes, um, and Eric, I think they had the potential to be the next Bachelor. They just got to work on their personalities. Will's is too cool, right? You can be cool, right? Then you can be too cool where it's like, you're so cool, you don't even speak full volume. That's how cool Wills is, and that's the problem with Wills. If he was cool with swag and a personality, it'd be a totally different thing, because he has the swag, he has the fashion, he has um, a personality that's there, but, but you, you gotta pull it out of him. And um, although we've had boring bachelors, he's way too quiet to lead that. So he needs to work on that. Once he gets that, he's good. Eric too. Eric has a personality, but he just fades. He fades so much to the back where you just forget that he's there. And I think that if he works on being a lead, he'll be in a much better position to get that road. You know what I mean? And um, Tra Trader Joe, <laughs> grocery store Joe, same thing. Fine. Fine. He has everything but the personality. He's so quiet and tame. And it's like, dude, we gonna need you like joe is not the type of dude who and this is what we're gonna want we're gonna want to see it you know what i mean especially and this is the thing it's a bias but it's true especially if you are this italian american dude from the east coast with this accent you we gonna want to see you grip up some chicks let's just be real nobody expected ari to like take a woman and kiss her even when he did it we were uncomfortable but from a dude like joe you won't want to see that. You won't want him to see, nah, come here and just, ciao. Woo! You know what I mean? Like, you won't want to see that. You won't want him to see that. Don't walk away from, not, not like abusive, but y'all know what I'm talking about. East Coast girls, y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, you know, pull you in and just, ha. Ah. We, we gonna want it because you, you're giving off that persona of a, a more macho guy. So we're gonna want to see like some of that macho-ness and um, his accent and his culture. We want to see that, but I just don't think that Joe is that kind of guy. So he would have to, he would have to really pull that out and really work on that to get us there. But he, he got the goods, he got the goods, but he just has to, he got to be more, uh, not aggressive, but more assertive. And that, that just isn't him. Like he wants to be chased, but you have to, you still got to pursue. Even if you're the bachelor, you still have to be very, you got to, you got to be a leading man. And they haven't had a leading man for a very long time. That's why they're going to pick Blake. <laughs> Baby, I'm waiting because um, it's about to be, what? We got like three more weeks in August. I'm telling you. In September, they're announcing Blake. Mike. If you do not pick Blake, you won't have a problem on you. You thought you had a problem with Peter? You won't have a problem. I'll accept e either one, but right now, I'm leaning more towards Blake. He just really gives me, like, leading man. I see Blake as a leading man. I And he's, like, he's mad quiet. You can't, he you can't hear a peep out of Blake. I think it's because he's gearing up. He done lost some weight. He getting a little cut. Child, he about to be our bachelor. Sisters, sign up. I want all the sisters all over Blake. You know what? Let me sign up. No, I'm not going to do that. Blake is my baby. But Colton, I'd sign up for that big jaw muscle man. Let me stop. This show, y'all got me all out of whack. Oh, Lord. Then over dramatic Caroline. Caroline? I have not heard Caroline in a very long time. I hear Caroline all the time. But Caroline. 
arrives in paradise and i'm just like stay woke colton because there's a bigger ham in paradise than you because she arrives and she just acts ever she's so thirsty for camera time but she's acting like she doesn't know how now she doesn't know how to talk to men i don't know how to oh my goodness you got oh i'm nervous oh you guys are with it. oh no are you are you together oh who do i give this date card to you oh no oh, okay and then she sits down with, wait oh when she sits down with grocery store Joe, does he like not get up the whole, is he still sitting there waiting for her to come back from the date? <laughs> like he, he sat down to talk to her and then she like went to the bathroom and never came back. Poor guy, he's such a good guy, he just stayed. <laughs> and everybody kept on saying, where the hell is Joe? <laughs> anyway, she was just getting on my nerves because I felt like it was so fake of her to be like, I just don't know what to do. You've never seen Paradise? You knew what to do, girl. You just wanted to act really dumb. And anyway, she ends up picking uh, John, eh, Venmo John. Smart girl. Smart girl. <laughs> I would too. I ain't even gonna sit up there and lie. He cute too. Like, he, this is the thing. When you get a wealthy man that's fine and treats you right, listen. Everybody can't get a Prince Harry, but you can get a Venmo John. At least if you stay in the right circles. Get in the right circles, ladies. You know what I mean? Get in the right circles. But baby, then Jubilee walks in and the girls get shook because Jubilee walked in with her like wavy, you know, 36 inch weed. Homegirl with hips was sitting nice, was snatched. She did not come to play with you hoes. She walked up in the end and men were like, even Kevin, who all of a sudden, <laughs> even though he was in love with Asher, he was like, Jubilee's hot. <laughs> like a flowing skirt that's how you enter paradise hair was flowing outfit was flowing and she was just looking around skin glistening like she had put on some illuminator i said yes sis that's how you walk into paradise had the lady shook okay even a uh, grocery store joe he was like she's hot she's hot he's cute <laughs> oh, but she like zeroed in on john I don't, I don't think she zeroed in on him for uh, securing the bag, which is something I would have done. I'm being honest. We're family here. We're te we tell each other the truth. But I think she was just really attracted to him and she really liked him. And I just, listen, you can be a nerd or a geek. It's 2018. Nobody cares. I hate when people make up this storyline of, oh, I like Harry Potter. I'm a nerd. I play video games. I'm a geek. What? This is, you know what I mean? This is not the, what, early 2000s. You are not Avril Lavigne. Sit down. Like, we don't care. Wait, was she even a nurse? She was punk. <laughs> they dragged up and not being punk enough. Like, it doesn't, like, we don't care about those things anymore. And it doesn't, just, liking a video game doesn't make you a nerd. There's so much more to nerd culture and geek culture. It's just like, everybody just want to be a part of something that's trendy. Now, Venmo John, I believe he's a nerd. Jubilee, okay, girl. I think you like certain things, but to try to adopt that culture, but you know what? I never say it to her face because <laughs> that military chick looked tough. And I, I'm, a, I'm a tough girl, but I feel like Jubilee knows some stuff. I feel like she would break out a blade and like slip my ribs. No, okay? Because also, a lot of girls are just like, she was really um spicy on her season. So I felt like Jubilee cussed out a lot of people on the show. I don't think it's a stereotype thing that they were afraid of her. I don't think it was the angry black woman stereotype. I think she's a military woman. And um, from someone who has military women in their family, they operate differently, you know? It ain't no game. They are soldiers, okay? So they know how to do certain things. So they're always, they're not being mean. They just, they just got a warrior presence. And I think that's what it is with Jubilee. Like she walked in and it's not no game. Are you with somebody? Are you with somebody? Okay, how about you, John? Wanna go on a date? Let's go, get your bag and let's get on a boat. Like that's how she was. She was very like, and even John was a little like, <laughs> yeah, he was a little nervous cause he didn't know how to operate with Jubilee. But when he realized that she was into him, he felt more comfortable. But guys, I still think that John, Vimo John and Kendall are a great coupling. But I really liked him with Jubilee. I felt like she was really interested in him. Like, no games. She really was interested in him. And um, I don't know if I talked about it because her date, she was so annoying on her date. But Caroline, Caroline her date with Vimo John next to Jubilee, Jubilee's date with Vimo John, two totally different dates. Because I felt like John was so into, um, well, I felt like John was trying to be into Caroline and or he was, like, really attracted to her. 
but she was so into other things and it made me feel like she wanted to be interested in somebody so that she could stick around because I just felt like she wasn't really into him but Jubilee was really into John real so into John that she asked him out on a date while he was hugged up with Carol like she did not care <laughs> Jubilee walked up to them while they were hugged up and said hey girl John you want to go out on a date <laughs> you believe this is why they ain't like you on that season <laughs> did not care that he was hugged up and i think that kind of shook john a little bit and also you know aroused him that this woman was pursuing him at all costs and she like pursued him on that date i like their date i really really did i thought they had i thought they i thought they had great chemistry i felt like it was real i felt like she really really liked him and she found out about the Venmo stuff later but um, even he was talking about it he was like I don't really like to say it because I don't want people to um, think about how much money I make I want them to like me for other things but baby we already looked it up <laughs> sign me up okay sign me up but I feel like they were the real deal I really do so I like this coupling they had a much better makeout session than Jordan and uh, Jen when he first tried to kiss her the heads like not she turned to wet it was just whoo it was weird it was weird but they finally got it together. But Venmo John and Jubilee, I liked it. I liked this coupling. Hmm. I would have never saw them two together, but she wanted him. She zeroed in on him. And can we talk about, and I think it's a little underlying thing because of the bias against Asian men. John uh, even mentioned that um, he didn't think, oh, this, I felt so bad. He didn't think that you know, that women would really be into him, you know, and him and Jubilee talked about it a little bit. And I like the fact that they talked about it, about being people of color on this show and, um, and dealing with, you know, not being first picked. And they both thought that on their season that they wouldn't go far. And John was just talking about how, you know, he's excited that he's getting picked because he thought that he wouldn't. And, and I like, I really, really did like that conversation that they had. But here is the thing. John's insecurity about not getting picked was confirmed by the men because they were all shocked that the women wanted to go out with John. Why is that? I didn't like it. Even Kevin was like, what does he have down there? He's a good catch, Kevin. Do you have, I was going to say, do you have his bank account? But it's true. Like women like support. Okay, it is what it is. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Okay, when I became an adult, I started thinking about adult things. When I was younger, I didn't care that a dude didn't have anything because we were kids, you know, we were going out, especially even in college. It was just like we were both struggling. Now that I'm a good grown woman, I know how much stuff costs. I've been paying rent for half of my damn life. I'm tired. I'm tired. So a guy who can take care of me is very attractive. Okay. I'm kidding. Just a bit. But there is so much more to John. I think he's, I think he's very attractive. His body. Who knew that he had that body? He's a very attractive guy. He's also very smart and he's also well off. That is attractive. That is something that you want as an older woman looking for a husband because you're thinking about things. You're thinking about, oh, when I have children, or, you know, especially when I become pregnant towards the end, I want to chill for a minute. And I want to know that you can take care of that. I don't want to have to hop right back out of pregnancy and, you know, go to work still in pain, still not completely stitched up, but I got to make this money. You know what I mean? It, you start, I don't know, you just start thinking about those I things. I think there are certain guys who have a problem because they feel like they're finer or, you know, they're the stereotypical hot guy, especially in the United States of America's and they feel like they should be getting all these dates and not John. And that bothered me because I didn't like the comments from the men. I really, really didn't. It's just like, y'all think y'all so fine? First of all, can we be real? None of y'all are Tyson Beckfords, okay? None of you dudes. Even Colton. Colton is fine. Colton is fine. He gives me more buff Squidward than anything else. But he's the finest dude there. But y'all are really acting like... You then just stepped out of GQ magazine. No, John got a John is packing a lot, okay? All across the board, he's a 10. So let's not hate. Let's not hate because you think you've been you've been made to believe that your archetype is the way to go for women. And a lot of it comes for racial bias, but we don't have enough time to go into that. But yeah, 
Stay woke. Oh, poor Kenny. He drew a heart for Crystal and she just destroyed it. He did this whole romantic thing for Crystal and just to let her know that he was interested in her and wanted to pursue her throughout paradise. And she was just like, ah, I'm not feeling the same way. <laughs> what we had was fun, but I want to explore other things. Poor Kenny. I felt so bad for him. <laughs> but wait, speaking of Kenny, what the hell was him and Aaron talking about with the cheese? I still, I watched the episode a couple hours ago. I still at this point have no idea what they were talking about with cheese. And then you get the cheese and the cheese run away. And then you're sitting there with no cheese and looking at the other cheese running. What are y'all talking about? <laughs> they, and I'm telling you, it was deep. They were into that conversation. Whatever they were saying, they believed it and they felt it. But I have no idea what those dudes were talking about on that beach. I only forgot to talk about this, but I talked about it earlier. When I was talking about how big Colton is, <laughs> this is just, this is just for me. I didn't know how big Colton was until Jubilee hugged him. And even she said it. She was like, oh, you're big. I was like, yes, he is, girl. <laughs> yes, he is. I had no idea. Like when he's sitting, you don't really see it. But then when he's standing, I'm like, this dude is huge. If you had a known by now, then you have to know. My type is giant. I love a giant. <laughs> Oh, I love like a nice tall lumberjack oh, or running back. I don't know why. I do not know why. None of the men in my family are like these athletic dudes. Like, none of them are built like this. I wasn't raised around like athletes. I don't I don't know why that is something that just Maybe my, maybe it's the fact that my reproductive system wants me to breed with a certain type of guy, but let me tell you something. A tall, like a 6'5", 225 stocky dude gets to me every time. They normally trash, so please pray for me that I pick the right dude. <laughs> oh, so Chris is still trash, okay? He just rebranded himself as the Goose, but the Goose slash Chris is trash. Because when Crystal tells Kenny that she wants to explore other things, other people here, she then lays down on that soil canopy with Chris and she's talking about how she wants to explore what, they're, what they have going on. How the hell do they have something going on? Have, you, have we ever seen them together? Now they got something going on. He reaches in and he kisses her. He does this whole thing. Oh, it's so hard for me to be all this so far away from you and not be able to kiss you right now. And have you, um, I've never made out with a blonde and Crystal is <laughs> falling for it. So they finally kiss. And then the next day he's like bragging about it. He's already told a bunch of dudes already, but this conversation that he has with Jordan made me think of Jordan so differently. Like I just did not like Jordan. I didn't like him in this scene. And I felt like Jordan was hamming it up for the cameras as well, but it just, it was ugly. The way he talked about the women in paradise and just women in general, that whole breaking it down, because Chris is feeling himself now that he's kissed Crystal and now he has the the Lindy Evangelista of paradise, Tia wanting to be with him. Now he's feeling himself and he's just like, he feels like he has this power now because he has the rose and... He has to pick a, which woman to give it to and he feels like he can hold that over them and mistreat them. And so these women are going to be all over him because they're trying to stay another day in paradise, right? So he's talking about how he has a power. Jordan is hyping him up and he's like, these are all the women that I'm going to... And because he has the power, so he thinks, he's literally talking about dating these women throughout the day and then picking one of them and then Jordan starts describing them as like an appetizer and you know the entree it was just gross it was so gross oh Bibiana she's definitely dessert he's like yeah Bibiana is dessert gross because at the end of the day they're all a part of bachelor nation so they're in a sense all really like friends and sharing this experience together. So to be talking about women who regard you as a friend like that is gross. It really, really is, Chris. And especially Jordan coming up with all these things. And he's like, oh yeah, you also got to take Annalise and thank you for getting that headache off my hands. Really, you were pursuing her. So you're playing with people's minds. And I just, I don't know. I didn't like either one of them in that scene. And then for Chris to go through all of this to try to get Colton off the island and telling everybody, tarnishing his name, getting the Three Stooges together and going around and talking about how horrible he is so that you can get him off the island so that you 
so that you can have Tia all to yourself to then turn around and do this is disgusting because you're lying you're you're lying and you're contradicting yourself you're saying that you want tia you're happy that you have her, you want to pursue this and then you're kissing crystal and then the next day you're talking about all these girls you want to bag and i honestly think it comes from a place of insecurity because chris has mentioned that he used to be 300 pounds so he was the type of guy who probably grew up very heavy set and did not he wasn't the attractive guy he gives me that he gives me that he just got fine um, and so he's he's moving in a way where he's trying to make up for lost time so paradise is him making up for lost time or in his mind or doing the things that he wanted to do or he had dreamed about doing when he was slimmer but he couldn't because he was so heavy set he wasn't getting the attraction or getting the certain women that he wanted and I'm like maybe it wasn't the weight maybe it was just you being an awful person is why you probably didn't have or get a certain woman that you actually wanted because a lot of times looks are not that big of a deal for women like it attracts us initially but we are so much more drawn to a kind guy a guy that treats you well a guy that takes care of you a guy that is very respectful to his parents, all these things that Chris wants us to believe that he is or that he's changed into but now it's very evident that he's still trash. And I am not mad at Colton at all for going to Tia and telling her the truth because at the end of the day, they're all friends, right? And he felt like that was the right thing to do. But I also felt like he was being messy because Chris tried to get rid of him and now he going to be his messy, but you know, cute Colton innocent self and get rid of Chris another way because he goes to Tia and tells her everything. And I love it because uh, Chris, and Jordan are just sitting on the beach and they're talking, yeah, we're going to get her. You're going to snack. You're going to have her for a snack and then you're going to do this. And then all the women are going to come at you because you have the rose, you have the power. And Tia walks up and Chris is like, hey. And she's like, oh, we need to talk. And he's like, oh, <laughs> oh God. And with that, oh God, I knew that he knew the jig was up. And I cannot wait for um, next week's episode when Tia reads him for filth. I don't know if she's going to go back to him. I think she's going to have a breakdown because we did see that preview. I don't know if she's going to go back to him and I don't know if she's going to spark anything up with Colton again. I hope not. I hope that's done and I hope they both move on to different people. And I'm excited to see who else comes into paradise. So that's it for me. So far, I'm still enjoying this season. It's giving me so much more than The Bachelorette and I'm really into it. It's unfortunate that it's going to end a bit earlier, but you know, we got to start gearing up for The Bachelor. <laughs> which I'm so excited about because I think it's going to be our baby Blake. Anyway, what did you guys think of this episode? Are you over T and Colton like I am? Do you think that, you know, Chris is dealing with some insecurities? That's why he's acting the way he is, or this is just who Chris is. Are you disappointed in Jordan? Cause I'm disappointed in Jordan. Are you disappointed in Annalise? So you feel like this girl like needs to get it together or get off the island? I do. I feel like, you know, Annalise, you gotta go sis. If you're not catching these cues, you're not ready to be in something like this. But let's talk about it in the comment section below. And if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you next week for the following episode of Bachelor in Paradise. Love you guys.